Hello, I am Chef Bernard Henri, but most people just call me Chef B. In this busy world, there is never enough time to get everything done. Between work, family, and everything else, who has time to cook anymore? That's where I come in. I am your personal chef. I come to you and prepare a four-star restaurant cuisine in your home. And I even do the dishes. Whether you want to have a romantic dinner or throw a dinner party for 75 people, you don't have to sweat the details. Just leave it to me, Chef B. I spent 30 years traveling the world as a chief financial officer for a large international construction company. Everywhere I went, I collected local recipes. When I was 48, I put down my hard hat, picked up my chef's cap, and went back to school. And now, voila, I am Chef B, your personal chef. We wanted to have a small housewarming with our closer friends and really start to enjoy the house because Stacy designed the house. Good and, job. Um, and I wanted to celebrate that with her. It's been a long renovation, but we love living here and we are so excited to show it to our friends and family. There was people being on hammers and everything and sometimes I would walk around the house in my pajamas, <laughs> but it, it turned out really fantastic and I really like our new home. We've combined this event with uh, a friend of mine who is one of, the, one of the great Rolling Stone photographers. You telling me that guy was the photographer of the Rolling Stones? He has photographed the Rolling Stones for years, but he was a Rolling Stone photographer, so he was a staff photographer for the, uh, for the magazine. So his body of work includes uh, you know, Van Morrison, uh, the Rolling Stones, Queen, Red Hot Chili Peppers. We're gonna bring a lot of his work in. It'll be in frames, we're gonna put them on. We're think we thought we'd put them on easels all around. I have done a lot of parties, but this is the first one I've done showcasing the work of a Rolling Stone photographer. Who knows what will happen? We talk on the phone, I think you told me, like uh, December 8th, right? December 8th, perfect. Okay. Yep. Well, the idea is to hopefully be able to spill out so everybody can enjoy the water. So we were thinking of, you know, tall bar tables outside, you know, maybe a outdoor fire going. That's our vision. How many people are you expecting? We're gonna say about 20 right now, but that could change. In the DC area, there's people from all around the world, and there's a lot of pressure to put on a good event. But I know Chef B will help us deliver a wonderful evening that will impress them all. When you call me, I said, yes, I want to do it. At the same time, it's like, you know, holiday season. Yes. I'm, I'm, I'm crazy, crazy busy, but I will make room for you in my schedule. Jeff B, he came into the house and talked about what he was going to prepare, and I could see my daughter really wanting to get involved in cooking the meal. If I may, Chef, don't want to step on toes, but we kind of had a little idea. There's someone in the house, if you could use a little help, that fancies herself a bit of a junior chef, and she might be somewhere around here. Oh, you're gonna be my sous chef, right? Or my uh, junior chef? Yeah. Hey, you know what? The one condition, you know, you work for me. And every time I ask you to do something, you have to say, yes, chef. <gasps> yes, chef. <laughs> <laughs> Being a personal chef, it's great. I love it. I mean, I go from one customer to the other one. I cover a large territory from Baltimore, sometimes all the way up to uh, Philadelphia, the Washington DC area, which is large. So it's kind of a half nice wheel travel. I just pick up my bag, my knives, and uh, go from uh, one house to the other one. We've had great experiences working with him in the past, so we thought we'd bring him back. And uh, not only does he do, does an amazing dinner, but uh, he's quite entertaining as well. And he's very engaged with the crowd and, and, and our guests. Huge fan. Huge fan. Wouldn't have him here for our special guest tonight if, uh, if I wasn't. He's actually going to do a cooking demo uh, for a party of eight, where we're going to get some hints and tips from him. Um, and demonstration and hands-on um, cooking class type thing. And the phone keeps ringing, so I don't mind working hard if I have fun, and fun I have. I 
I am always busy, but this week is especially chaotic. It's a holiday season and I have already committed to seven dinner parties in seven days. I am slammed, but I love John and Stacy. We always have a good time together. So now I'm doing eight events. You know what? I better get shopping. All right, it's uh, shopping time. I need to get ready for uh, Stacy's and John's party, so I'm here to shop. I've got my list here, ready to go. Uh, one thing I, I strive for is to buy the best quality ingredients for my customers. I want my uh, dishes to be great, looking good, and tasting very good. So for that, you need some very, very good quality ingredients. Let's go, let's do it. I'm gonna need a couple lemons. All right, I need some uh, nice chives to dress up my plates. That looks pretty good bunch here. And I also need some uh, tarragon. That's gonna go in my uh, crab cakes. That's pretty nice. Butter, and a lot of it. I'm a Frenchman after all, so butter is always good, right? Okay, I'm at the uh, cheese department, my favorite place. Oh, it smells so good. But I'm here to find some uh, black caviar, which I'm gonna add to my uh, quail eggs. And here it is, that's exactly what I need. All right, I'm done with the shopping, and next up is the kitchen, where I'm gonna show you how to cook some recipes that I'm gonna serve tomorrow at uh, John and Ceci's party. I'll meet you in the kitchen, see you there. One of the secrets to having a successful party is pre-planning. That's true for you and it's true for me. Today is the day before John and Ceci's party and I am in my kitchen early making an herb and garlic butter for the mussels that I plan to prepare tomorrow. I got a pound of butter here and I took it out of the fridge probably like three, four hours ago and it's very soft. Take a shout out, give it a rough chop. And here it goes in a food processor. I got some garlic. I'm just gonna like smash it. After all, it's called herb and garlic muscle, so let's not be shy on the garlic. Then my herb is today parsley. I always have parsley, but if in my fridge I have any chives, I will just like throw it in the mix. Blend this, make it to a paste, almond and hazelnut. I'm gonna mix up my butter, and look at that. It's very nice and workable, pliable. Nice green color. And since I'm working with gloves, you know, I wouldn't do that with my bare fingers, but I'm gonna indulge myself. Oh man, that's a mean batch. I love it. While my mussels must be prepared fresh, I do have one seafood that's just as good the second day. My mini crab cakes recipe is to die for. I'm going to lightly saute diced red peppers. I need a little bit of mayonnaise, not too much. Tarragon is good with a lot of seafood. Lemon juice, not much, just a touch. Stone ground mustard. I tried that dish with a Dijon but it doesn't really work. I like the uh, texture and uh, taste of a uh, stone ground mustard. I'm gonna add my red peppers. So, touch of salt, touch of pepper, mix that up. In my sauce, I need to add an egg yolk. Next, I got my crab. Use a strainer and squeeze the moisture out of it and put it in a sauce. But you want it to be wet to a point where it's going to stick together, but not too runny because you're not gonna be able to create the mini crab cakes. Next, prepare the panko crust, and I'm gonna go and put it in the oven at 400 degrees. Give it like a very, very nice coloration. I'm gonna start rolling my crab cakes really, really small, the size of a cherry. Roll it in the panko. So I got 12 cute little crab balls. 
they're ready to go to the oven. So in the meantime, I'm gonna do a little uh, mustard, mayonnaise sauce, a little lemon juice, a little salt, pepper mix. All right, they are perfect. Look at that. Nice, cold, crusted, excellent. Voila! Mini crab cakes with mustard mayonnaise sauce by Chef B. Enjoy. It's a morning of John and Stacy's party, and we already have a party crasher. It's Mother Nature, and she's bringing an ice and snowstorm with her. The weather is putting a few extra wrinkles in our party plan, but not to worry, because Chef B always has a plan B. Hello, how are you doing? Well, today was supposed to be beautiful, and we were gonna have the party flow out onto the terrace and have people enjoy the view outside, and it is sleeting and snowing outside. So I was really concerned, but Chef B always has a plan B, so I think the party is just gonna be fantastic anyway. As soon as I get into the kitchen, it's time to work. And the very first thing I must prepare for the party is the last item on my menu, my dessert. My salt-crusted pineapple has to bake for four hours. What you want to do is get some uh, heavy foil, two sheets, line them up. Create a bed of sea salt. That's 20 pounds here, so we got plenty. Cut the top of, not completely. I want to hide the pineapple. I don't want people to guess what's under the uh, sea salt when they come, because it's a surprise. By the way, the salt is the most expensive component of a dessert. But I want to add a bit more moisture, so when it evaporates, it's gonna create a crust, very hard and it's gonna trap the heat inside and slow cook the pineapple to the core. You don't want to cover the pineapple completely, just like bring the foil around so the salt doesn't fall on the side. I got my oven at 350. I make sure that there is no crack in the salt. And here we go, voila. Oh man, time is not my friend today. I don't know what happened, but I only have an hour and a half until guests are supposed to arrive. And I still have several recipes to prepare. Back to work. Next up is my delicious beef satay. So the first thing I need to do is marinate my beef for my beef satay. I've got my lemongrass. I'm gonna create a paste. I'm gonna give it a quick slice because if I put that in chunks in a food processor, I'm gonna blow up the engine. A little bit of coriander here, turmeric, a pinch of sugar, and I'm gonna put a little uh, ginger paste. Very thin pieces of beef, that size. Guess could take a little bit more salt. I'm gonna put some gloves on. I don't want to be walking around for the next five days with like uh, yellow hands. Just gonna thread them. And once I give it a nice sear, I'm gonna like undercook them. And I will uh, pop them in the oven at 400 degrees whenever I need to put plates on. Thank goodness Chef B is here. Um, I'm really excited to cook with him, but it's starting to snow a little harder, so I'm kind of scared that it's gonna get canceled. Got a couple texts from some friends, are we still on? You always get that, and of course everybody owns an SUV nowadays. And I'm like, get in your car, it's a celebrity party in Aspen. Just pretend you're in Colorado, it's on. 110 percent, baby. 150, 117 percent. This thing is on. Rain, sleet, snow, Santa appearing, reindeer. I don't care. This party is on. I wish I had time for a nice glass of red wine, but with just 45 minutes left, it's time for me to steam some mussels. Where I can prepare the herb and garlic butter for this recipe in advance, my mussels must be freshly steamed. 
put a little uh, white wine right here. When you cook mussels, you don't want to stack them up. If you stack them up three, you know, row high, they're not gonna be able to like up and the one at the bottom. All right. They are ready. Look at those nice plump mussels. Now I need to shuck some mussels. Once you shuck your uh, mussels, you put them back in one of the half shell. Basically what it is, is when I came to this country, I tried to serve escargot. What was I thinking? I mean, people don't eat too many escargot here. But I love escargot, so I came up with the idea instead of escargot, it's basically the same type of butter, the same type of flavors, and uh, I'm uh, putting it in the mussel. I got my herb and garlic butter ready here and I want you to put enough butter on it so it's covered. I mean, I don't want to see the muscle. I promised John and Stacy's little girl, Kenan, she could be my sous chef, so I'm putting her to work. Hey, yes, I could use some help. I really like his cooking. I've tasted his cooking before. My grandmother had a party, and I tasted all of his food. It was really good. So I want to help him out and try to make the food a success for the um, people coming over. Finally, with just moments to spare, and just as the guest of honor Chester arrives, my recipes are complete. I'm zen. I'm just like, uh, I love that moment. I mean, it's like when everything is getting ready, is getting together, we're gonna send it. So, we're rolling. <laughs> Yeah, you better move on. <laughs> Everyone wanted his food. Ooh, that's good. Excellent. Yum, yum, yum. It's been fantastic. Everybody made it here safely, and it's been wonderful. The food's been amazing. It's been, it's been incredible. Beyond expectations. I love this guy. I love this chef. Thank you, honey. I love her. I love life. I've only had two bottles of wine. Lift it up! Uh, anyway, great party. And uh, Van and I have been working for a long time. And uh, Van knows that when it's dessert time, that's when Chef gets a, Chef B gets a glass of wine. So, right. yeah. I want to uh, say thank you to my uh, new addition to the staff, Kayla. <laughs> Uh, anyway, I'm gonna tell you a little story. Uh, one of my customers, two years ago, turned 40, and uh, she hired me to do a, a dinner. And I said, do you want a cake? She said, no, it's boring, just like, surprise me. So I showed up in her kitchen, and he was standing there. I said, what is that? I said, what? Well, it's your birthday cake present. I mean, like a surprise. What is it? Well, it's a surprise, you're not gonna know. Okay, Rachel Ray. <laughs> Move forward, there's a new chef in town, Chef B. <laughs> All right, so next, we're gonna get the pineapple out. There you go. Pineapple has been sitting here after the oven for three hours, and it's still warm. So next, I'm gonna, can you see the juice? Yeah. It's still steaming. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna slice it carpaccio style. I'm gonna fan out three or four slices on each plate, and then a scoop of ice cream. The sauce that goes on my pineapple is my own creation. It's freshly squeezed orange juice, vanilla bean, and Grand Marnier. It's always my biggest surprise and my biggest hit. And as you can see, tonight is no exception. I'm, I'm a bit inspired right now, I have to say. Um, I've, I had the chance to work with Chester Simpson. If you come on over here, a couple of times you put on a small show, showing of your work. And I walked through this gallery and I walked outside and I got a little choked up because I, I kind of feel like, you know, cooks cook food and photographers shoot pictures. And I'm, I'm standing here between two iconic artists. I really feel like you guys are interpreting history and experience in a very, very special, very compelling way. And you need to be acknowledged. And these aren't pictures, this is, this is history. These people let me come into their little world and be part of them or be a fly on the wall, you know? If these artists 
give you the right to come backstage and hang out with them. Never sell prints of them to make them look bad. Every one of these pictures has a story, like these guys. When they came to town, only the college radio stations were playing their music. And so they went to every college radio and did on-air interviews. And then the next year, when they came back, their song was number one on the charts. Everybody wanted them. They said, no, we're going to go back to the college radio stations that supported us. If you have a dream, you can pursue your dream. And it you can be realized. Uh, I was a personal chef to uh, Leonardo DiCaprio in 2007 on, uh, when he was filming Body of Lies. Here in DC, and he liked my food, so he took me to Morocco for two and a half months. Uh, so I cannot paint, I cannot dance, I cannot skirt. And then I just enter the culinary world. You put me in a kitchen, you bring me some food, and it starts flowing. So I'm a very happy chef. Thank you very much. I need to put more food out. Our party crasher, Mother Nature, tried to be a buzzkill, but the party was still a huge success. Everyone loved Chester's photographs, and they loved my cuisine, of course. The party was fantastic. Everybody had an amazing time, and of course, the food was wonderful. I tried all these foods, and I tried my own first champagne. <laughs> <laughs> I, saw, I saw you sip. I saw a little sip there, just a sip now. <laughs> This is a good time. We're ready to do it again. It's fantastic. I had a great time at the party. I was very shocked because I've never done a dinner party before, exhibited my work that way. And uh, I was very happy with the success that everybody came up and started asking me questions and wanted me to tell my stories about the photograph. Well, the party's over. Until I see you for more happy times in the kitchen, bon appétit. Oh, OK. I do have several other parties this my sole crusted pineapple recipe has to bake for four hours. Well, I said four and I should <laughs> My salt crusted pineapple has to bake for four hours, and I showed five again. <laughs> the party's over. No, I mean, no. Paste. Oops, stay here. This is Lenny's close up. I am Jean Valjean. <laughs> For more information, including the recipes in this episode and a chance to ask your cooking questions, please visit our website.